If you had to pick one car that captures the beauty, power, and excitement people feel about sports cars, you would find no better candidate than the Porsche 911. What's even more impressive is that this has been true for over 80 years. Porsche is a trademark in itself, and it has such amazing features that cannot be found in other vehicles. However, this is one high-end car and can be very expensive. Ferdinand Porsche changed the course of cars as its design proved that compact cars are faster than most powerful vehicles. So that's why, here are 15 things about Porsche that you might not know. Number one, when thinking about environmentally friendly cars, a Porsche might not come to mind. But the auto manufacturer was very involved in the cause ahead of time. In fact, Ferdinand Porsche designed the very first electric car in 1989 and named it Egger Loner Electric Vehicle. The model was also known as C2 Phaeton, or P1 for short. Ferdinand Porsche was working for Ludwig Lohner, the owner of his father's car company, Jacob Lohner. Later on, Porsche designed the first hybrid car and named it the Lohner Porsche Mixta Hybrid. The hybrid featured a Daimler International combustion engine instead of batteries. Two gasoline engines were used to power a generator, which as a result, produced an electricity supply to drive the front wheels. This prototype was displayed by Porsche and Lohner in 1900 at the Paris World's Fair. Number two, Ferdinand Porsche was eventually drafted into the army, where he served as a chauffeur for none other than Archduke Franz Ferdinand. Luckily, he was back to designing cars long before that other chauffeur got the Archduke and his wife killed. Number three, kicking off the First World War in the early 1920s, Porsche moved to Stuttgart, where he was hired by Daimler as technical director. There, he designed the Mercedes-Benz SSK, arguably the greatest race car of its era, with an unbeatable top speed of 120 miles per hour. He was already one of the most famous engineers in Germany, yet despite that, his business didn't take off. You see, the German economy was still in shambles in 1933, and very few people could afford cars. This is where Hitler came in. He became the Chancellor of Germany on January 30th, of that year. And just a few days later, at the Berlin Auto Show, he announced the beginning of a new era for automobiles. He wanted every German citizen to have a car that could fit a family of five, start in the cold, and be very fuel efficient. Essentially, what he wanted was a people's car, a Volkswagen, if you will. Of course, the project was extremely ambitious, which is why Hitler recruited the best engineers he had, including Ferdinand Porsche. He began working on what would eventually become the Beta in 1934, later becoming a member of the Nazi party and even the SS. In 1938, Hitler unveiled a state-owned factory for Porsche's car, which would be built by the newly established Volkswagen company. Ferdinand worked with his son Ferry in his Stuttgart villa, where they came up with the legendary design of the Beetle as we know it today. Number 4. During World War II, Porsche was recruited for military projects like the Elephant Heavy Tank Destroyer. Because of that and his SS membership, Porsche was arrested and imprisoned for war crimes in 1945. He was released a few years later, but by that point, his son, Ferry Porsche, had assumed control of the company. He wanted to build cars with the Porsche name on them, and thus, in 1948, he created the Porsche 356. Number 5. The Porsche 911 is a legendary sports car with many wins under its name. In 1963, when the popular Porsche 911 was originally developed, it was named 901, but Porsche renamed it to 911 when a French automatic Peugeot said he trademarked models with digit zero. Since its inception, the Porsche 911 stood out from other vehicles. From an engine located behind the rear axle and an iconic shape, the 911 was different from every other car on the road and played a major role in making what the brand of Porsche is today. Number 6. The horses featured on both Ferrari and Porsche's logos are tied to Stuttgart, Germany's coat of arms. The Ferrari logo and Porsche logo are incredibly similar, so it might not be too surprising to find out that they came from the same inspiration. The prancing horse was first painted on warplanes flown by World War I, aviator Francesco Baracca. It has been said that Baracca was inspired by a shot-down German plane that displayed the prancing horse logo of the pilot's hometown of Stuttgart. Number 7. The insane Porsche 917. At 52 years old, one might assume a car of that age would be no match for modern supercars. However, the Porsche 917 defies expectations. Introduced in 1969, its eight-cylinder, 4.5-liter engine secured Porsche's first 24 hours of Le Mans victory and dominated the Can-Am racing series. Despite its age, this car remains extraordinary. Its 5.3-liter 12-cylinder variant, boasting a staggering 1,200 brake horsepower, outpaces some contemporary supercars, 
reaching speeds of 240 miles per hour. It's essential to remember that this powerhouse hails from the 1970s, making its unprecedented level of power truly remarkable for its time. Number 8. In 2017, the Porsche Cayenne S Diesel set a world record by towing an Airbus A380 that weighed 285 tons. Number 9. A 1982 Porsche 956 is the most expensive Porsche ever sold at auction. The Porsche that has brought in the most money at an auction was a 1982 Porsche 956, which sold for $10,120,000 in a 2015 auction in Pebble Beach, California. This particular car was the winner of the 1983 24 Hours Le Mans race. The most expensive car ever sold at auction is 1955 Mercedes-Benz 300 SLR known as the Uhlenhaut Coupe sold for hoping $142 million. Number 10. During the early 2000s, Porsche crafted a 5.7-liter V10 engine intended for use in their LMP race cars. However, changes in regulations prohibited its use in the racing arena. Consequently, Porsche opted to create a road car around this exceptional engine, giving rise to the Carrera GT. Number 11. Porsche strongly dislikes it when individuals mispronounce their name to the extent that they have produced an official video instructing viewers on the correct pronunciation. The video conveys a sense of their frustration, almost resembling an explanation tailored for children. Porsche. 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 Number 12. Porsches have consistently lacked a traditional grille. It's crucial to note that what may appear as a grille on a Porsche is, in fact, an air vent. Unlike grilles, which play a role in defining a car's face and brand identity, air vents on Porsches are purely functional. This unique design element is a result of Porsche's historical placement of engines in the rear, eliminating the need for a grille and contributing to the distinctive style that sets them apart. Number 13. We all know that Lamborghini was famous for farming machinery, but did you know Porsche made tractors? The auto giant produced over 125,000 tractors in the 1950s and 60s. Once, they even designed aeroplane cockpits and forklift trucks. Number 14. Porsche, renowned as the customization leader, offers a bespoke experience at its exclusive customization shop in Stuttgart, Germany. With limitless possibilities constrained only by imagination, budget, and legal parameters, Porsche is prepared to bring your unique visions to life, ensuring safety and adherence to regulations. Notable customizations include a request from an American cattle rancher who desired his ranch's cattle brand embossed on the leather seats, replacing the traditional Porsche logo. Another instance involved an American ostrich farmer choosing to use his own ostrich leather for the car's interior. Furthermore, an Arabian king commissioned vehicles in the national colors for all ministers. Number 15. Porsche features Sally from the movie Cars in their museum. Additionally, they produced a one-off 911 Sally special as a tribute to Pixar's movie, which was auctioned for charity and sold for $3.6 million. So that's where 15 things about Porsche. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it informative. If you did, make sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel for more car content just like this. And thanks for watching.